Hey, HD Church, great to be back with you once again, and welcome to HD Church Online, our midweek version, amen? And tonight I get the opportunity to share with you, and tonight, if you'll get your Bibles and your, and your notepads, we're going to be in Joshua chapter 1, verse 8. That's Joshua chapter 1, verse 8, so get those out right now, and let's get ready to jump into the Word of God, amen? God's Word is so rich, it's continually molding us and shaping us into who God declares us and desires us to be. Amen. So if you have it, let's look at this. In Joshua chapter 1, verse 8, this is what it says. It says, This book of the law shall not depart out of your mouth, but thou shalt meditate therein day and night, that thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written therein. He says, For then you'll make your way prosperous, and then you'll have good success. Before we get going, I really want to kind of shed light into what is taking place during uh, this conversation between Joshua and God. You know, Moses had, had just passed and, and he had, had left and he had died. And Joshua was chosen by God to take over the leadership of Israel. Israel is on the banks of the Jordan River, ready to cross over into the promised land. So this change in command and in leadership of the, of the people of Israel was going to be different. It was going to be different. And Joshua is entering into a new relationship between him and God. Before, Moses was the mouthpiece. Moses was the one that God would always speak through. So now Joshua was taking that uh, position, was taking that new leadership role on in himself. So by taking that position, his relationship with God was going to be changed as well. And so God wanted to prepare him for it. Because if you remember uh, Moses, he went through a lot in dealing with people. He went through a lot in dealing with the tribes and and trying to get them uh, from the place of Pharaoh and the Red Sea to where they're at today. There was so much that went on and he had to deal with quite a bit. So Joshua is having this conversation with God and God basically tells him, Moses, my servant is dead. Now I've chosen you to lead my people into this promised land. And he says this to him, as I was with Moses, I will be with you. As I had a relationship with Moses and and, and how I instructed Moses, that's the same way I will be with you. So be of good cheer, he tells him. And Joshua entering this new relationship was going to have to deal with a lot of things. You know, anytime we as believers um, or even just as people, we go in a different direction in our lives. In our lives, there's always going to be maybe people with their own opinions, with their own ideas with advice and we're going to have to kind of sift through the things that come to us to make sure that we can stay on track with what God is going to do in our lives. You know, when we come out of the world and we begin to change things, we would always get questions. Well, why do you have to be at church every week? Why Does God really need you there on Sunday night, Sunday morning, Wednesdays? There was always kind of questions. And this is what I'm going to kind of share with you tonight. To stay on course with God, we're going to have to be able to filter through all the things that would try to keep us from staying on track with God and where he is taking you and I. Amen. And there's a great example in Matthew chapter 16. If you guys will turn there, I want you to really look at it, write it down into your notes. But this is a, 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 a thing that happened with Peter and Jesus. And you'll recognize it as we read it, but I'm really going to kind of stop and and give you some um, insight into how this relates to what we're talking about tonight. In Matthew 16, verse 21, we'll start there. It says this, And from that time forth, Jesus began to show unto his disciples how that he must go into Jerusalem and suffer many things of the elders and chiefs and the scribes and be killed and raised again on the third day. See, Jesus understood what his purpose was here on this earth. He understood God's destiny for him. And part of his destiny was going to the cross. He understood that he, he had that embedded in, him, in his heart, in his conversations and his prayer time and, and, and being directed by God, that God established in him. And here he is beginning to convey that to his disciples. And they're like, whoa, what's going on here? And this is what takes place here. Jesus was so focused on where the Father was leading him, and he knew that God was leading him to the cross. God was taking him to that place of the cross. But after he began to share this uh, stuff with the disciples, Peter took him aside afterward, and this is what Peter said. said, 
Then Peter took him and began to rebuke him, saying, Be it far from thee, Lord, this shall not be unto you. But he turned and said unto Peter, Get thee behind me, Satan. Thou art an offense unto me. Now listen to this. He says, For thou savorest not the things that be of God, but those things that be of men. He says, You don't really understand the things that be of God, Satan. You only know the things that belong to man. And see, Jesus was so focused on where God was taking him, and he began to convey this, but the disciples really didn't understand it. They had a whole different idea. The disciples actually thought that Jesus was coming to the earth, that he would become so popular, that he would become king in Israel, and he would take over then. That was kind of the concept they had in their minds. That's what they had. But that wasn't what God's plan was. Now, I want to read it to you out of the easy, because this really tells it the way I want to get it across to you. In the easy, it says it this way. And Jesus turned around and said to Peter, Satan, go away from me. I must obey God, but you are not, you are trying to stop me. Your thoughts do not come from God. Instead, you are thinking like men think. See, Jesus was focused on where God was taking him. The disciples didn't know, but they began to speak what they had in their mind, their opinions, their thoughts, their ideas, their advice. And Jesus said, no, no, no. I have to focus in order for me to complete my course, in order for me to get to where God is taking me, I have to be able to block all of this stuff that isn't coming from my father so that I will stay on track with him. And this is the same thing that God was telling Joshua in Joshua 1. He was getting him ready to stay focused because all of the stuff that was going to come against him was going to try to deter him from obeying God. And God said, the only way you're going to succeed is if you listen to me, not to man, not to anyone else. You'll have to listen to me and stay focused upon the direction I am giving you. Amen. And that goes for us too as, as well, my brothers and sisters. God has given us all a purpose. We all have, God has a plan for all of us. Each of us have something different to do in the kingdom of God. But we all have to do the same thing to stay on course that Joshua was instructed to do. And that's what we're going to talk about. I've seen three things in Joshua chapter 1 verse 8 that I'm going to share with you and kind of um, get a little bit more across to you. And I hope that you'll receive them and that you'll begin to do it too because there are going to be so many people that will, that will try to deter you from finishing your course in the things of God. And none of us want that. One of us, all of us want to complete our purpose. And the first thing, there's three things I've seen. And they're very uh, easy. I'm pretty sure you've heard them before. And one of them is this. The first one is this. Three things that I see. Speak the word. Meditate the word. And do the word. That is exactly what God told Joshua. Let's read it again. Let's take that from the top, just so we're back to the, our foundation scripture. It says this, This book of the law shall not depart out of your mouth. In other words, in your mouth has got to be the word on a daily basis. Every day, that word has got to come out of your mouth. It says, But thou shalt meditate therein day and night. Thou shalt meditate therein day and night. Every day, God's word should be upon our mind. God's word should be uh, our meditation throughout your day at work. Um, I know it's hard all day long because you're working, but there's times when, when you can take a quick mental break and just remember how good God is in your life. Amen. And he says this, that thou mayest observe to do all that is written therein. So we have to observe to do. That means to obey. So what we speak out of our mouth and what we meditate in our, in our hearts and minds and what we continue to do, he says, when we will couple all those three together in our lives continually, he says, then, then you'll make your way prosperous and have good success. So that's what he told Joshua. These three things, Joshua, you have got to put in your life every day to stay focused upon where I'm taking you and be able to block out all of the things, all of the words, all the opinions that will try to distract you. All right, so let's get right into them. Number one, this is what the three things that we're going to get into tonight. Number one, speak God's word. We have to speak God's word. 
said, the word shall not depart out of your mouth is what God told Joshua. He said, it can't come out of your mouth. It has to be there all the time. It has to be on the tip of your tongue every single day. God instructs us to speak and confess what he says, not what we say, not what we think, but what he says. In John chapter 8, verse 28, it says this, Jesus saying this, I only speak what my father has taught me. Jesus said, the only things that come out of my mouth are what I get from God. What he has taught me, what he has directed me, those are the things that I speak out of my mouth. And in Proverbs chapter 18, verse 20, out of the easy translation, it says this, you have to live with the result of the words that you speak. Amen. We can stop there all night long. We have to live with the results. What kind of results do we want from the words that we speak? We want words that lift up and edify and strengthen. We want words of faith. Amen. We want words of encouragement. We want words that line up with God every day. He says, you have to live with the results of the words that you speak. Words are able to save life and cause death. So you must accept the results of what you say. Our words are very important. They create. Just like God's word created in Genesis, our words create. And with our words, we can create an atmosphere of faith and, and courage so that we can stay in line with God. These are the things that God is telling Joshua. You got to put these three things in your life, Joshua, because you're going to have to deal with everything that comes your way that will try to discourage you. So I believe we should be doing the same thing every day, speaking God's word. Whenever something comes against us, the first thing that should come out of our mouth is what God says. Amen. And number two is this. We've got to meditate God's word. Amen. Now, we're not talking about meditation where you have the incense in all the rooms. We're just talking about pondering the things of God. Have you ever just been somewhere and then you just stop and begin to think, man, God is so good. Even when I was dead in the world, even when I was out there in sin, the Bible actually says that he still died for me. Even when I didn't know him, he still cared about me. See, when we sit there and we think about these things that are in the word of God, we meditate them. They get deep into our hearts. They get deep down inside of us. Amen. And that guards us. That guards us from the things that people try to speak to us. See, if somebody were to come to me today and tell me you're not saved, it's so ingrained in me, I'll say, get thee behind me, Satan. I don't believe that. You can't deter me. But there are cases in which people can discourage you. If you remember the story in Genesis about Eve and the serpent, Eve knew what God had said. Eve was sitting there and the serpent said, does God really say you can't eat in the garden? She says, oh no, God said we can eat anything in the garden. All of these trees we can eat except the one in the center, in the midst of the garden. That's the one that God says we can't touch and we can't eat. And the devil began to say, well, that's not really what God said, is it? See, God only said that because he knows that when you eat, see? See the words that were coming out? Those words were ripping away what God had already spoken. And we all know the end result, what took place. We all know what happened. And you see, my brother and sister, people will come and not knowingly. Peter didn't know what he was telling Jesus. He'd be, he was just speaking what he thought. But Jesus understood the spirit behind it. And it could be a family member, could be a, a good friend. Uh, it could be anyone that comes and begins to maybe deposit words in our lives that are not in line with what God is speaking to us. And that's where we have to be able to stand up and say no. And the meditation, speaking out the word and meditate on, on his word creates that shield of faith that will help us keep those things at bay. Amen. In Psalms chapter 119, verse 97, we're going to read this. We'll be reading out of the Message Bible. It says this, Oh, how I love all, your, all you've revealed. I reverently ponder, which means to meditate. I reverently ponder all the day long. Your commands give me an edge on my enemies. They never become obsolete. I've even become smarter than my teachers since I've pondered and absorbed. You hear that? I've pondered and absorbed. When you are pondering and meditating the word of God, it just 
absorbs into your life. Your, your life just absorbs it. And he says, since I've pondered and absorbed your counsel, I've become wiser than the wise sages simply by doing what you tell me. Now watch this. What, I watch my step avoiding the ditches and ruts of evil. So I can spend all my time keeping your word. See, when we're meditating and when we're speaking and when we're doing the third thing that we'll get to, when we continue to do that, it helps us to see the ruts, see the, the pitfalls that, are, that lie in front of us it, by avoiding them, by staying true to what God is telling. He says, I watch my step, he says, avoiding the ditches and the ruts of evil so I can spend my time keeping your word. I never make detours. Listen to this. I never make detours from the route you laid out. You gave me such good directions. See, we can't make detours, my brothers and sisters. God has a path for you and I. He has a direction for you and I. And the Word of God is the source that will keep us in line in that direction, in that path. And we have to stay true to God's Word. That's why He is so adamant about us not listening to the things around us not listening to the naysayers, not listening to the little things that would try to discourage us and keep us from moving forward. And this is exactly what he told Joshua. This is exactly what he told him. In Matthew chapter 12, verse 34, he says, the word says, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. Out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth will speak. So we just read that if we meditate, that absorbs into our lives. So as we meditate God's word, guess what? It's going to change what comes out of our mouth automatically. Meditating God's word will control what comes out of our mouth. See, when we're meditating on God's word, it's going to change our heart. And the Bible just, we read it right now, says out of the abundance of the heart is what will come out of the mouth. So I need to change what's in my heart by meditation. I need to get the word of God and implant it in myself so that I can speak out what God is saying. Amen. And the third thing is this, doing God's word. We can't speak the word and we can't meditate it without doing it. We have to be doers of the word and not hearers only, James tells us. It says we can't speak and meditate God's word. We have to obey it, live it, and walk it. We have to obey it, live it, and walk it. In order to be successful, these are the three things that he told Joshua. These are the three things he, instructions that he gave to Joshua to implement in his life so that he could be successful. In Deuteronomy chapter 30, verse 16, it says this, reading out of the easy translation. He says, I say this because I am commanding you today to love the Lord your God. Live in a way that will give him pleasure. If you obey all his rules, you will live. And you will have many children. Then the Lord your God will make good things happen to you. How many of us want good things to happen to us? He says, then you got to obey. You got to do the word. You got to do what he instructs. We want good things to happen to us. He says, then the Lord your God will make good things happen to you in your country. And this is the country that you are going into. God wants to do good things in us, my brother and sister. And he says, be doers of the word. Observe to do all that his word says. In Deuteronomy 29.9, in the message it says this, diligently keep the words of this covenant. Do what they say so that you will live well and wisely in every detail. How many of us want to live well and wisely? In every area of our lives. All of us do. Amen. And this is what God instructed Joshua. And we're going to go back and read it as I close. This is what we're going to look at. These are, this is what God instructed him. And the purpose was to make sure that Joshua would stay focused on his task, which was to take Israel into the promise and not lose focus. This is what he told him. He says, this book of the law shall not depart out of your mouth. You better speak it, Joshua. But thou shalt meditate therein day and night, every day, to make sure my word is on your mind and in your heart. That thou mayest observe to do all that is written therein. He says, so that you will obey it. And everything I instruct you through what you speak and what you meditate, that you will do. Not what people tell you, 
not what people try to lead you to do. You will only focus on what I tell you, Joshua. And he says, if you'll do those things, he says, then you'll make your way prosperous and then you'll have good success. My brother and sisters, that's our prayer for you. That you'll live prosperously, not just monetarily, but in every area of your life, spiritually, mentally, physically. And that you'll be successful in your Christian walk and your relationship with God. Hey, church, I hope you enjoyed that uh, word. Amen. I, I, I hope and I believe that it edified you, built you up and strengthened you so that you can do even greater exploits in the things of God. We want to get ready to give. Amen. And I want to share a passage of scripture with you really quick as you prepare yourself to give. And in 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 6, the scripture we all know says it, it says this, but this I say, he which sows sparingly shall also reap sparingly, and he which sows bountifully shall also reap bountifully. Every man, according as he purposes in his heart, so let him give, not grudgingly or of necessity, for God loves a cheerful giver. And God is able to make, and this is really what I want to share with you this last portion, God is able to make all grace abound toward you, that you always having all sufficiency in all things may abound to every good work. God wants to bless you to be a blessing, my brother and sister. He wants to bless you so that whenever anything comes your way or someone needs help or the, or, or, or the church needs anything, you are always ready. You always have the resources to be able to give. And God says, if you'll be a cheerful giver, one who enjoys giving, one who loves giving, one who doesn't have to work it up, but it continually flows out of them. If you'll be that type of person, God says, I'll always make sure you have what you need to be a blessing. Amen. So tonight as you give, all the ways that we can give should be on your screens. And we want to go ahead and pray over the word. And we'll go ahead and pray over your offerings to this evening. Father, we just thank you this evening for every giver. We pray, Father God, that they love. We know that they love giving. They are cheerful givers. And you said that you will always make sure that these cheerful givers will always have what they need to be a blessing. So now, Father God, we just pray abundance and overflow to overtake them today as they obey your word in their giving. And tonight, Lord, as we've read your word, our desire is to stay focused, to stay on track to where you're leading us. And we will do exactly what you told Joshua. We're going to speak the word. We're going to meditate the word. And we will do the word. And in that, we know that we'll be successful. So thank you tonight, Father God, for what you've spoken to us in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen.